Hi everybody, I hope you're keeping safe and well. My name is Mr Longridge and I'm the faculty leader for the CREATE faculty here at Emma Mike Grammar School. I'm also the head of DT and so today I'm going to talk to you about what it's like to study design technology at the school with us. Given the circumstances surrounding the current COVID-19 pandemic, we're unable to invite you into school as we usually would. So I'm also going to set you a small task today to let you experience what it's like to do DT. So I'm going to move through into a PowerPoint now. Uh, you will need a pencil and some paper to do this task. So good luck. I hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing you all in September. Let's go. First of all, we're going to have a think about what design and technology actually is. Design technology is a fun and exciting subject. It's a subject that allows you to combine your creative ability and your technical understanding to solve real world problems that could help improve people's lives. At Hetman White Grammar School, we split design technology into three subject areas. We do food preparation and nutrition, we do graphics, and we also do resistant materials. In food, we research into ingredients, you find out exactly what they are, you find out what the ingredients actually do, so what their technical properties are in each of the recipes you're making. Uh, you find out about healthy eating, so you'll think about what foods you eat, why we need different types of foods, and how you can hopefully improve your diet by eating the right kinds of foods at the right time. Uh, we, uh, we think about preparation of food, you'll be given opportunities to develop new recipes. You might look at a specific dietary need and make something that specifically meets that person's requirements. So again, solving problems. What, what's the problem? Somebody maybe has a gluten intolerance. How can you design a new product in food that solves that problem? We also give you the opportunity to taste and try different types of foods. Uh, you can learn about why certain foods taste the way they do, what's in the food that makes them different and give them the different nutritional content. The subject's quite hands-on. You find out about things by doing things and making things. And finally, the most important thing in food is that you learn tricks and techniques needed to be able to make delicious foods. In year seven and eight, you'll make a wide range of recipes that will help you develop your culinary skills and make new delicious food. In graphics, we focus on the world of graphic printed products. We look at things like posters, we look at packaging, we look at products that are usually made out of paper and, and cardboard and put together to make innovative design solutions. Uh, in graphics, we learn about different materials and manufacturing techniques used in the graphics industry. Much of the stuff we do in graphics is, has got an industrial focus and that means that we, we tend to do things that replicate what you'd actually experience if you went and worked as a graphic designer so that you've got a well-rounded experience of the subject. We're very fortunate at Hetman White Grammar School to have a variety of different facilities and, and in both of our DT rooms we have computers that run Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator as well as the more, slightly more complex 3D modeling software such as SolidWorks. Uh, we're also very, very lucky. We have four 3D printers in the department, so we can 3D print pretty much anything that you make on SolidWorks out of ABS or PLA polymer, which is a kind of plastic. In uh, graphics, we have a number of projects in Key Stage 3. We start Year 7 with a robotics project where you design and make a small robot. Uh, we have a, a magazine project where you'll design and make a magazine cover, looking at the importance of photography and typography and colour within the design industry. We also get students to, to make an air freshener, so using a, an air freshener gel that we cast and pour into a mould so that you can actually make a, a realistic working product. In a similar way to food, it's about looking at the existing problems and then designing things that will solve those problems. Resistant materials is similar to graphics, however in resistant materials you'll be using woods, metals and polymers uh, to make a wide range of different products. These are physical products that you'd make in a workshop, you'd use a wide range of different tools and machinery to make them and we try and encourage real creativity here so we get you thinking about what, what you could do with the product, what you could do with the material and again what the user needs, What's, what does a person that wants this product or what is the person that's going to use this product's key requirements. One of the ways that we, we start projects in resistant materials is to analyse existing products. So we might ask you to look at something that already exists, think about why it's been designed in that way, look at the design features and the characteristics that enable that product to be used well and to do its job properly. 
You might also be asked to think about people's specific needs. So you might have to research into the problems that people experience. You might look at problems that people have when completing specific tasks. So it could be something as simple as how do people pour a, a, a kettle of water into a cup without spilling it. Uh, it's a really practical subject, very, very hands-on, requiring you to combine your knowledge and your understanding with their uh, creativity to come up with new and innovative design solutions. So essentially in resistant materials you'll be able to design and develop new products and solve solutions using a wide range of different tools and pieces of machinery using the workshop very very hands-on and very very creative. I think it's worth highlighting at this point that we operate a carousel system in year seven and eight which means that you'll come into school you'll be assigned a group a design technology group and you'll then rotate through these three subject areas. In year seven, we tend to set them so that we divide the year into three. So you'll do one project for one term, you'll move to another subject area where you'll do another project for the other term, and then you'll rotate onto the third project in the third term. In year eight, we do this slightly differently because we essentially split the year into six so that we have shorter rotations. This means that by the time you take your GCSE options, so at the point in year eight where you decide which GCSE you want to do, you will have done a mini project in each of the three DT areas so that you refresh your memory about what they're about and have more time to experience the subjects before you make that choice. I'm now gonna go on to your actual design challenge. So your design brief for this challenge is to invent a new ingenious product that will help improve people's lives. There's three stages to this. Step one, you're gonna take a minute to think about your daily life. I need you to write a list of all the problems and difficulties you experience in a usual day. Think about how you woken up, how do you get out of bed, where do you find your clothes, when you're brushing your teeth, what problems or issues do you have? It could be absolutely anything. Hopefully you're gonna be able to create a wide range of problems that you will be able to choose one of them and think about how you can design a solution that will help solve that problem. You're not gonna to have to make it, all this is about designing. So you can be as creative as you like, think about uh, any new technologies, but do try to keep it realistic. Don't really want people coming up with inventions such as a, a levitation machine or a machine that teleports people. I would like you to try and keep these as realistic design problems. So, step two, is to grab a piece of A4 paper and a pencil. When you do this, my advice is get a sharp pencil, get a piece of plain paper if you've got one, you're gonna turn it landscape and you're gonna come up with your ideas. Step three, start sketching. Now I'll show you how I'd do this in a minute, but you should aim to generate at least 10 different design ideas that will help to solve your problem. Think about the layout on your page, try to space them out so that they look, uh, look creative and look neat. Uh, try not to do something that you've seen before. Try not to do anything that exists already. The final stage of this is to add notes and sketches. So around the edges of your drawings, just annotate them. Explain, say what they are. You might explain the design process. You might mention the materials or how it will be constructed. At the end of it, it should be very self-explanatory what you have drawn and why you've drawn it. And when I'm looking at this work later on in the year, I'm going to want to be able to see how creative and how innovative you can be. Once you've finished your design ideas, I'd really like you to take a photo, send them in to me. Once you've emailed them to me, I'll have a look through them all and identify the ideas with the most potential and I'll award a few prizes. So this should really take you about an hour. It's up to you now to grab a bit of paper, get your pencil ready, have a look at how I would do it and then start your design ideas.
So there we have the final design ideas. You should generate a range of about 10 designs, and then if you could email them to me using the address provided, that would be great. I hope you've enjoyed that, and I look forward to meeting you all in September.